How to repair your automatic air hydraulic jacking beam. Start by verifying that the release handle is in neutral and moves freely, meaning that the release system is adjusted correctly. Especially make sure that the release lever has 1 to 2 mm play. In order to change the air cylinders in the top beam, start by pushing out the outer arms. Then disconnect the air supply. Next step is to remove the 10mm nut under the top beam. Remove the 8mm bolt under the outer arm. Carefully remove the arms. Repeat on the other side of the jacking beam. Remove the two screws on the top of the beam. Pull out the base support arm from the bottom frame. Then remove the four air hoses at the base of the bottom frame by pushing the small red rings while pulling the hoses. Remove the protective coil tube as well. It is now possible to carefully remove the air cylinder from the top beam. Replace the air cylinder if defective. When refitting the air cylinder, take care not to pinch or break any air hoses in the process. Refit the two screws on the top beam. Use a dry PTFE lubricant spray on sliding surfaces. Refit the support arms, making sure you do not pinch or break any air hoses. Refit the 8mm bolt and also the 10mm nut on both sides. Refit the coil tube. And finally, refit the air hoses at the base of the bottom frame. Be sure to push the hoses fully into the quick couplings. Please note that you can adjust the speed of the support arms by the four screws on the valves next to the quick couplings in the bottom. Please refer to the manual. Place a piece of wood to secure the scissors. Lower the jacking beam till it locks. Remove the hydraulic hose and reservoir hose from the pump. Plug the hoses to avoid oil spill. Remove the two screws securing the pump block. Then remove the air hose by pushing the small red ring while pulling the hose. It's now possible to remove the pump. If you are changing the complete pump, simply skip to the instructions for refitting the pump. If you need to change or repair the air motor on the pump, start by fixing the pump in a vise. Remove the sound absorber. Observe the exact position of the air motor before you remove it and remember the correct position for refitting. Remove the packing box.
remove the seals. Clean with detergent and check the parts for scratches and marks. Refit new seals in the packing box. Make sure they are positioned correctly before refitting. Clean the pump block with a detergent. Secure the new seal with grease before refitting the packing box. Use plenty of grease on both. Remove the piston from the air cylinder and clean it. Clean the piston and check seals and pump piston for damages. Lubricate with grease and refit piston and spring. We recommend you align the thread start on both pump block and air motor before refitting the air motor on the pump block. This will make it easier to catch the thread. Take care to position the air motor correctly. It can be fastened tighter, but it has to be placed like this. Refit the sound absorber. The next step is to refit the air hose onto the air motor. Then remount the pump in the bottom frame. Refit the oil hose from the reservoir. Be sure to push it fully into the quick coupling. Refit the hydraulic hose on the pump. Finally, adjust the release to have a 1-2mm to two millimeter play. Note that the four brake valves in the bottom frame allow you to adjust the speed of the extension arms. Next to the valves you will find an air switch that allows you to adjust the automatic retraction of the extension arms. If you need to repair the cylinder, start by removing the plugs on the front panel. Remove the extensions. Then remove the three screws for the control panel. Lower the panel and disconnect the hoses. Make sure to mark the hoses for a correct reassembly. Taking a photo might be a good idea. Remove the axle screws on the top beam and remove the axles.
push the top beam to the left and remove the rollers. Lift the top beam a little and remove the air hose for the top beam. Remove the top beam completely. Remove the screw securing the base support arm on the right side. Remove the base support arm. Pull the air hose for air pressure into the oil reservoir from the quick coupling. Remove the hydraulic hose and the oil hose. Remove the circlip on the front axle. Push out the front axle. Lift the scissors unit a bit and remove the axle. Lift or push the entire scissor unit to the right and out of the jack. Turn over the scissors and remove the circlips on the side. Remove the outer scissor arm. Remove the next circlip and twist the curve above the cylinder bearing. Remove the cylinder from the scissor unit. Fix the cylinder in a vise. Remove the piston rod. Remove the old seals. Clean the parts and check for scratches and rust. Replace the complete cylinder if needed. Refit new O-ring, backup ring and scraper. Note that the yellow backup ring is bowler shaped to fit the O-ring. Make sure to position it correctly. Fix the piston rod in a vise. Mark the position of the valve disc before you remove it. Remove the small circlip on the valve disc and then remove the ball and compression spring. Clean the disc and remove the O-ring as well. Make sure the valve disc is clean and dry. Then refit new ball, compression spring and circlip.
replace the O-ring. Use plenty of grease when refitting the valve disc in the piston rod. Please notice that there is a 0.6mm hole in one of the 6mm holes. Mark this 0.6mm hole. Turn the valve disc home and then back until the marked 0.6mm hole is positioned as shown, 90 degrees to the right of the hose connection. This is necessary to bleed the cylinder properly. Observe the position of the bleeding screw on top of the cylinder before you fix the cylinder in the vise. Mount the piston rod with the fitting on top. When following this procedure, the bleeding screw and the valve disc will be positioned correctly relative to each other for bleeding the system. When the jacking beam is ready for reassembly, start by refitting the cylinder into the scissors. Use plenty of grease on all bearings and axles. Replace the curve and refit the circlip. Again, use plenty of grease before you refit the outer scissor arm and the two circlips. Turn the scissors over. Clean the rollers. Clean the roller axles and use plenty of grease on both axles and rollers before you refit them. Make sure the rollers run smoothly. Refit the circlip. Refit the three screws securing the control panel. Make sure not to pinch any hoses. Refit the plugs. Refit the oil hose and the hydraulic hose. Make sure to push the air hose for the oil reservoir fully into the quick coupling. 
raise the jack to max lifting height. Be aware that the top beam is not supported by the cylinder when raised like this. Refit the base support arm on the right side and refit the screw. Lift the top beam in place and then grease and refit the rollers. Push the top beam home. Lubricate the two short axles and refit them. Refit the screws that hold them in place. refit the air hoses, make sure you push them fully into the quick couplings. Test the control panel to make sure it's working correctly. Refill the oil reservoir using good hydraulic oil with viscosity ISO VG15. Correct oil level is to the lower edge of the hole. Raise the jack to max lifting height. Loosen the pivot screw on the top of the cylinder half a turn. Activate the pump and tighten the screw when only pure oil without bubbles emerges. Remove the air hose for lowering. And then remove the two through going screws. Test the air cylinder with pressure to make sure it runs freely. If this is not the case, it has to be replaced. Note that the brake valve on the air hose allows you to adjust the speed of the air cylinder. Refit the two through going screws. Be careful not to tighten them too much or they may deform. Refit the air hose. Be sure to push it fully into the quick coupling.